This is Robert Merdlachi, the Mindshare Learning Port, Canada's Learning and Technology e-magazine. And welcome to This Week in Canadian EdTech Special Edition. I'm honored to have joined me for a Mindshare Learning Moment. Amy Shaw, the CEO and co-founder of PikaPack, teaching skills for success like empathy and gratitude, both in the class and at home. PikaPack is backed by the EdTech vertical of Wyatt Combinator, Imagine K-12, based in Silicon Valley, New Schools Venture Fund, Unchartered, formerly Unreasonable Institute, and the DMZ. Amy, thank you for joining me today, and thank you so much for your contribution to the Canadian COVID uh, Learning at Home Resource Hub that we created. Oh, no, thank you for having me today. I appreciate it. And how are you feeling in uh, this time of crisis? How are you and your family personally? I hope everyone's well. Yeah, no, we've been keeping um, well and safe uh, and healthy, and I think we're very grateful. We're lucky to be, you know, able to work from home, to have our jobs, to be able to support the community. So um, we feel really gr uh, grateful. And and your your platform is right at the forefront of what's what's happening right now. So you must be extremely busy with with the the anxiety that kids and, and parents are experiencing at home and, and no doubt teachers as well. It's impacting all of us. Oh, definitely. I mean, I think teachers are very aware of the mental health kind of risks of students being in isolation or not being around their peers. And so, I mean, on one front, we've actually made a donation to the school community to access all our pro uh, resources for free in terms of social emotional learning development. Um, so we've seen a huge surge um, of requests of about 1,800 requests uh, representing about wow. 700,000 students. So Kudos that's to been, you for that. Well, Kudos to that you're able to do that. <laughs> yes, no doubt. Uh, I mean, I think I've had to uh, definitely increase my hours. Last night I was working until 1030 responding to, I think in a 24 hour period, we had 50 school and district requests. Um, and so each of those take time to kind of fulfill and to support, but uh, we're really committed to making sure that um, schools and, and education leaders um, do have the right resources to be able to support students. Well, it's, it says a lot about, you know, the current state that we're in and the vision mm -hmm. that you had to serve the market because you, it, it truly is a platform that is in demand. And what inspired uh, Pika Pack? Yeah, I mean, my co-founder and I actually, we grew up in Mississauga. Uh, we went to, you know, Peel Board School. Uh, we truly, I think, are altruistic in the sense that we believe in truly the power of stories to create change. And she's a, a gifted storyteller. And we thought we can develop a series of books that help teach these social emotional learning skills. I think inherently we, we had these skills in the beginning and we were really fortunate to have a partnership with George Brown um, uh, College with an education PhD there, Dr. Kimberly Bazaar to help us develop it. Uh, we were invited to Y Combinator um, or Imagine K-12 in, in Silicon Valley. <laughs> And really, I think we saw a lot of you know, potential when we first started testing out our resources. It was pretty amazing. We actually put one lesson on gratitude out there. And we had 13,000 teachers sign up um, over a course of a couple of weeks. And um, you know, we really saw early on demand and interest for us being able to combine um, these social skills with literacy and, and do that so that we can embed it into core academic curriculum. So it's been um, an amazing journey. We've been able to partner with Fantastic. amazing educators. And I think right now it's amazing um, to see teachers, you know, really making sure that that's at the forefront because they're already pretty strapped for time in terms of face time with students. Um, and we're already seeing at um, Kids Help Phone is seeing a 112% increase in inquiries over the previous year. And so- Incredible. Uh, there's been, you know, definitely a need for this. And I think it's not only teachers that need to support this, especially because we're dealing with young children in elementary school. Right. Um, but parents need to support this. And they kind of have to, you know, partner on this. And I think I thought part of our vision, we really um, have developed from the get-go resources for both teachers and for families to support their students in the, in the development. It's really about co-learning today, isn't it? Uh, parents is co learners and co-teaching and you know it's it takes well, a digital village to raise a child in the 21st century I've said before and it's never been so true as today 
For sure. And I, you know, the other thing I'll point I'll mention is that social emotional learning, um, as much as it's for students, it's actually for the adults as well. It's part of the definition. It's a process mm -hmm. that we all learn. And teachers are learning these skills constantly. They're practicing it. They're learning it. As they come, to, you know, when they first start off as teachers, you know, it's stressful. They're managing right. all these students and they kind of get better over time. They learn to self-regulate. They learn how to calm and uh, be collective in their classrooms. And, and likewise, parents, um, they're feeling a lot of anxiety as well. And Absolutely. So a lot, of, do, lot have lost their jobs and, and have been severely impacted. Exactly. And so I think one of the things that we try to do with be it our student resources or family resources is also teach the adult in the equation. Um, how do we start encouraging that conversation to have, be at home? You know, how do we practice our calm bodies? What does that calm body look like? Um, what are our you know, strategies or, or ways that we practice that, um, uh, that way to you know, collect ourselves back to um, calm? And so those are things that are, seem simple enough, but when you're right. feeling that anxiety, having that moment to self check in and to think about, okay, how am I really feeling? Like you asked me that right. question in the beginning, right. uh, often, you know, we stay good and we think it's fine mm -hmm. to kind of quickly get our things done. But be it a child or be as an adult, we need to practice that skill. We need to be able to have those conversations. And I think what we've tried to do really well with our program is to help teachers or, or parents or children um, be able to have those conversations. Absolutely. Well, I'm a big fan of yoga these days because I'm not mm -hmm. playing through my hockey three times a week. <laughs> so I've, we've been out, you know, doing family walks and hikes and rollerblading. And the physical activity is part of the process, no doubt, in, in managing oh, your well-being. Oh, definitely. So, it's um, like even we have a whole unit on self-regulation skills and yoga is definitely one of those skills. And, you know, practicing breathing, journaling, you know, having that kind of tool set of things that you can try out and see what is like, what works for me um, really does matter. So I'm happy right. that yoga works for you. It does work for Ab me as well. <laughs> absolutely. I, I'm I'm. I'm intrigued by the, the notion of a tool set, right? And knowing the right tool to use at the right time to, mm -hmm. in terms of a coping mechanism. And perhaps you can uh, share uh, some of your resources, examples uh, that we can uh, get a, a sense of what, it, what it's all about on the screen. Definitely, yeah. So, I mean, as I mentioned, we're offering our resource for free for schools to set up. And one of the kind of neat features is that we allow students to actually join our narrative world called Peekaville and they become a Pika Pack character. They can design, you know, their hair, their skin tone, their eye type. So they really can self-identify in this world. And with that, it's not just for vanity. Um, we actually show their avatar with um, these different expressions and emotions and they can actually click on the question mark they can learn about how that emotion shows up in their face and their body um, how they'll react um, and then they can actually click on that and do a self check-in and that data can be Impressive. shared with uh, the teacher which you know is considering we're all all remote and separated um, gives a, a nice kind of unique view to the teacher about how a student is feeling and how they can kind of um, separately uh, check in with that uh, child to say how can we provide extra support you know let's review those different calming strategies we mentioned or tool set that you've created mm -hmm. and and help them really um, feel supported during um, this period of isolation that's really impressive and next the other thing I wanted to share is a set of um, specific resources that we've created around the coronavirus and the pandemic. Uh, students are, you know, it's a unique situation, you know, especially when you're thinking of our youngest members, you know, uh, pre-K or, or JK to uh, fifth uh, grade and grade five, uh, where students are trying to make sense of the cancellations to uh, understand why are they staying at home and so what we've done is created a whole series of Fantastic. lessons um, where they can understand that and it's in a narrative form so they actually can um, read a letter from one of our characters kind of experiencing uh, so in our world it's called Picaville so in Picaville there's a Pika flu and you know Cody's upset cool. he's, he's like right. I don't understand and he also he's also scared he's admitting to them and so students can actually write back to Cody and it's been fun we've actually had students write to us uh, letters uh, oh, about yeah how to how to kind of practice you know calming down and how they're dealing with the cancellations and our team will actually um, 
I mean, as Cody, Cody will make sure to write back to the students. And so it's kind of a, a neat way for them to help one of our characters, you know, uh, overcome some of the peak of flu challenges. And then also, um, you know, have those conversations at home. So we have a series of family questions that uh, uh, parents can ask their child or guardians can ask their child about um, kind of uh, uh, facilitating that conversation again. Uh, that, also that, mentioned we, oh, sorry. Ryan. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. I was just saying how we have uh, not just that first lesson about cancellations, but we also talk about, you know, things like how do students um, create their own special space at home? How do they show empathy? Thinking about why are we, you know, why uh, it's important for us to stay at home. Um, showing gratitude to the frontline uh, workers, how we think about our community in terms of seniors. And so we're trying to make sure that we have a, a variety of different opportunities to spark the conversation about um, the different kind of challenging uh, times that we're living through. Absolutely. Th this is brilliant. And kudos to you for paying attention to the true needs uh, of the, uh, the market, if you will, and parents and kids and teachers, because oftentimes they've seen that tech companies start up and have a hunch on something that they're passionate about, but it's really about understanding what the, re the real problems are and, and doing your homework. Oh, thank you, and I appreciate oh, that. You're that. welcome. I was going to add uh, that uh, on one of our walks, uh, one of the families and the kids put out their chalk on the sidewalk for, for other families uh, to to draw and, and show uh, gratitude towards, you know, the community and the frontline workers. So, uh, you know, it's really uh, heartwarming to see, um, you know, the human spirit uh, at its best, isn't it? Oh, definitely. I've been so impressed hearing all the stories. Like for example, in, in Toronto, all the med students are, you know, Care, uh, doing caregiving services for all the frontline workers. That, that literally brought a tear to my eyes. I was just so um, impressed with society of how everyone's stepping up to really support um, be it our frontline workers or um, the overall community. Well, kudos to you for your leadership and passion and, and helping kids uh, continue their learning at home in, in a positive way. Oh, thank you so much for having me on your show. My pleasure. That was Amy Shaw, the CEO and co-founder of Pika Pack. My name is Robert Marglacci of the Mindshare Learning Report. Be sure to check out Triple W Mindshare Learning to get your latest issue. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, and keep the learning curve steep.